Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm Lincoln and today I'm going to show you how to use a reference cube with photos on it so you have a scalable reference in your scene. It makes it really easy to keep a reference that scales with your object you're sculpting in your scene at all times. All right, so let's get into it. Okay, so there's going to be a few things to show you. The few things have changed. The first thing is the snap cube is no longer a cube. It's a ball if you guys haven't seen that already. And if you click on the front or the back, you'll notice before it would just, if you double clicked, it would just stay on the view. But if you click it once, it goes to the opposite view, which is kind of nice. And if you double click, it'll go, it, if you have it scaled in, if you double click, you can get it back to your view like you like. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is the paint has changed. So we'll open this up. And you're going to notice if you click on the paintbrush and paint and the material, you know, you always had, you know, your paint here. So we're going to move it over to white. And if you click on the little box now next to the paint color, you, this is where you actually put your textures in. It's changed now. This is a little bit different. So we're going to add one in and we'll just put this on. Now it's cool because what you'll see is you'll have a live preview of what your your object is going to look like with those painted on and if you change the color you can see that it gives you a live color change which is really nice so we're going to move back up to white okay so what we're going to do is go to the scene menu and add a box now all right so the first thing let's take a look at the wire mesh now if you want to use this and you've got your reference in another really cool thing about using this reference this way is I can make notes on this cube with my paint. So if you do that with this, if we validate this and we use the paint and we draw on it, you can see super pixelated and it's a mess. So obviously what we can do, you can do this before or after you validate it. Come in, we're gonna bring it up to usually three, 400 is plenty for this. Remesh it. Now we've got plenty of mesh to work with if we paint, because if we paint on it now, you can see we have plenty of of resolution it'll make decent notes all right so the first thing we'll do if you want to put one on here I'm going to show you two different things so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to click on the paint and I'm going to clone it and the reason I'm doing this is it makes it so much easier to go from a photo brush to a paint brush that way with the photo brush you're just dragging pictures on and for your references so you can see we already have this reference in. The biggest thing on here, two, there's two things we need to fix. First is the fall off. So we're gonna change the preset, click on the preset and just go to a flat. All right, and you'll see the fall off automatically goes to just a big white dot. As before, I had, you know, you're like the faded dot right here. That's not what we want because it'll have, do a weird thing with your images. So I'll click on the flat and leave that. The other main thing you want to do, they've changed, this is another quick little change, go from the dot to lock plus radius. So click on lock plus radius. That way when you click and drag, click on, the, click on your front view there, and now we have our little pug going on there. Okay, so what we want to do is turn off symmetry. So we're going to click this back and we'll do it again. And it depend, just depending on where you want to put it. Now, here's, here's the thing with doing it this way though. As you can see here, you know, you have some bleed on the side of your cube. If you don't want that, which is easy to fix, what you can do is just click on the side view, select mask, use your rectangle, and just select a small portion. And if you click on the outside, it'll invert your selections so you're open on the side. Go to the gizmo, click to the front, and go back to our photo. And we can click and drag. And I still want it. So you want it up just a little bit higher so you're kind of centered on your reference. Go to Gizmo. And you can see now that it's all cleaned and masked. All right, so go to the mask, drag on the outside. It'll, it will clear it for you. All right, go to the front view now. Say I want to put one on the side. Go back to our photo, to the brush icon. Remember, click on right here. And now I have some others already imported. So the whole premise for this little thing was, hey, you know, you want to sculpt a pug. I want to put some tiger stripes on him. 
and then I also have another one in here with a boxer that has some little snaggle teeth so say we want to have the snaggle teeth view on there now I'm going to do that on the side just do the select mask and just mask one little spot click on the outside to reverse the mask gizmo turn it to the right and I know it's a you know it's a few steps but once you get the hang of it it'll go pretty quick all right so click the right go to the select mask and clear your mask and now we have two views so you click on the front you can click on the right and it's scalable and then when you actually move this off to the side use the gizmo move this off to the side and you have a nice usable scalable reference that will scale with your object at all times now if you there's another little th trick you can do with this as well whoops if you want to say I want this in here and I kind of want to see what's going on on this what you can do is click on your sphere come up to the materials and you can go to additive and you can see here now I can see through and see my object um, you can also change you know how opaque it is now you can sculpt on this your references in it and as you sculpt and turn your reference is going to be right there with your object it's really handy and really easy to use all right now another thing say like I was saying you want to put some notes on here all right so the easiest way to do this is you can come up to your layers palette so click on the little stack of paper add a layer I'm going to go ahead and rename this to see, see how to do it, which is self-explanatory, but we'll put this on here and just name it Notes. Okay, now that you have this, you're going to see something. You'll see this little green dot up here. That means you have an active layer on here. You're also going to see a little Notes thing right here if you have these notes up, if you have this on your screen, also in your scene menu. The box is going to have a little green dot next to it, letting you know that you have layers active on there. All right, just, just so you guys understand how that works. Okay, so once you're in there, we can use the paint tool, and I can just do whatever I need to. So say I have, I want to see where the eyes are in relation to the nose, they're above. But then if we scroll around to the pug, you can see here, they're a little bit different. You know, his eyes are over the top of the nose instead of below so it's an easy way to see your notes and it's you can put scribble on here where using these in the background like i showed you in my other video that doesn't work but that will on here now the cool thing is we can go up to layers if once you're done and you've you've figured out what you need to see with your notes you can just turn those off and now you're back to normal with your reference cube all right, so I hope this helps, and this is something you can really use while you're sculpting. I'm going to be using this quite a bit because I have some big projects coming here pretty quick, and some of you guys can follow along if you like. All right, if you guys are liking these videos, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. All right, thanks.